Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about concavity and the second derivative test. So first, let's recall uh, that for the first derivative, right, so if f is defined on an interval i, if f prime is always positive on that interval, then f is increasing on that interval. If it's always negative, then f is decreasing on that interval. And if the derivative is constant, or sorry, is zero, then f is constant. So here's the definition of concavity, and we'll see why we wanted to recall that about f prime soon. So suppose f is differentiable on an interval i, then we say f is concave up on that interval if f prime is increasing, and concave down on that interval if f prime is decreasing. So what does this mean? Like, okay, that's great, I have something about the derivative. What's going on geometrically? So in the case where we are concave up, right? So this would be something that's concave up. Why? Well, what's happening with our tangent lines, right? So f prime should be increasing. Well, f prime is the slope of my tangent lines, right? So if I look at, wow, these tangent lines, what do I notice about these slopes? I'm going from big negative to a little less negative, to zero, to small positive, to steep and thus bigger positive, right? So we're seeing f prime increasing here because the slopes of my tangent lines increases. And similarly, over here, if we have something that's concave down, well, I could just flip that parabola over and we see, right, tangent lines level off, my slope is decreasing, then they get negative and then steep, so, you know, a really big negative number, and so we see that f prime is decreasing here. So in terms of what you're thinking graphically, you're thinking something like facing up, right? Sitting on top of its tangent lines and facing up, and then this guy is facing down, right? And so this is why you're seeing the words concave up and concave down, right? This guy's facing up, this guy's facing down. So how do we test for concavity? So, right, we tested for increasing and decreasing, for f by looking at the sine of f prime, right? Well, here, we actually want f to be twice differentiable. So all I mean by twice differentiable is that f double prime exists. You can take the derivative twice on your interval i. Then what we want to look at is we've got f, we've got our f prime, and we've got our f double prime. So let's think about this. So for f, we know that f is increasing slash decreasing when f prime is positive or negative, respectively. And we don't really care about f double prime. It doesn't really tell us anything there. So for concave up slash concave down, well, we said that f prime should be increasing or f prime should be decreasing. Well, that's basically the same thing as this, except for I'm just one step lower, right? So if I want f prime to be increasing, its derivative, which is f double prime, should be positive. And if it is decreasing, then its derivative f double prime should be negative. And so when we want to test for concavity for f, we want to look at the second derivative. Okay, so f is concave up. If f double prime is greater than zero, and it's concave down if f double prime is less than zero. So let's start by looking at a very simple example here with just our cubic function, uh, f of x equals x cubed. So f prime obviously is going to be 3x squared. f double prime is 6x. So you kind of want to do something similar where you can make a sign chart, except for here, this isn't called a critical point where this is zero, but you can think of it as a critical point for the derivative. Um, but we want to still look for when it's zero because we care about the sine of f double prime. And so when I look to the left, right, I plug in, say, negative one, then I get a negative number. So this is negative, f double prime of one is six, which is positive. So my sign chart for the second derivative looks something like this. And so what this says is f is concave down from negative infinity till zero and concave up from zero to infinity. Well, we know what this graph looks like, so let's actually check this, right? So it looks something like this. And that makes sense, right? I'm noticing that this is facing down slash my tangent lines are getting flatter. 
And then here I'm facing up and my tangent lines are getting steeper, right? So my derivative is increasing. So you might ask, what's going on here? What's going on at the origin, right? Because I didn't say anything about zero. So this green point here is what we call an inflection point. Okay, so let's define that officially. So the official definition is a point of inflection or an inflection point, because I'm usually lazy and prefer saying two words instead of three, uh, is a point on the graph where the concavity changes, right? So I want to point out one that is and one that isn't here. So uh, let's say we have something that looks like this, right? So then your point of inflection is going to be somewhere around here, right? So this is where we're switching from concave down to concave up, right? We went from uh, decreasing slopes of tangent lines to increasing slopes of tangent lines right around that point. Uh, an example where it's not, so here we're going to go from, you know, facing down to facing up. But why is there no inflection point? Well, it has to be a point on the graph, right? And so if I have an asymptote there where I see a change in concavity, that matters for my intervals of concavity, but I do not have an inflection point on the graph there. We really want to be thinking something like the picture on the left. So when are we, or what must be true if we have a point of inflection? So it's somewhat similar to uh, when we have a max or min, it must be at a critical point. So if uh, C, F of C, is an inflection point, we can actually say for sure that f double prime of c either does not exist or f double prime of c is zero. So here's your first exercise. So I want you to find the intervals of concavity and also the x coordinates for any inflection points for the function f, where I go ahead and you know take out the time that you would spend doing the quotient rule, and I just go ahead and give you the second derivative here, and so I want you to use a sign chart for the second derivative, and remember, for inflection points, it's not just when f double prime is zero, but also when it does not exist. So now we're going to talk about the second derivative test. So this is not to be confused with like finding intervals for concavity. Really, our goal here is the same as the first derivative test. We want to find relative extrema, relative max and relative min, of our function f. And we're just going to use concavity as the tool instead of using increasing and decreasing as the tool. So here's the statement. So we're going to let c be a critical value where the second derivative is defined at c. So remember, critical value means f prime is 0 or does not exist. If we want f double prime of c to be defined, this really means that f prime of c must be 0. Can't be the d and e case. So we've got a horizontal tangent line at c. Uh, if f double prime of c is greater than 0, then we have a local min. And if f double prime of c is less than 0, then we have a local max at c. So you might be thinking, like, these seem flipped, right? Like, greater than 0 and I have a min, less than 0 I have a max. It should be the other way around. But let's think about the picture here. So, again, in the first case, remember, we have a flat point at c. So we've got c here. And then we have f double prime of c is greater than 0. So basically, we're facing up, right? We're concave up at c. And then I've got this horizontal tangent line here. And so this is exactly the picture of a local min, right? Or a relative min. And then for the second one, uh, you know, if we have c over here, we've got a flat point, And then it's concave down, right? f double prime is negative. So we've got something like this. And so this is why we're seeing a min when it's facing up and a max when it's facing down. OK, so let's look here and try to find the relative max and relative min uh, if they exist. Um, not necessarily the, but any relative max or min of this function. So we actually did this in the last video on the first derivative test. And we're going to check to see that these agree, but show that they are indeed different. So f prime here is going to be x squared plus x minus 12. And so the first thing you want to do in either test is find your critical values. So here, right, we have x minus 4, or x plus 4, sorry, times x minus 3. And thus, our critical values are x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. And so if you wanted to do the first derivative test, right, you would just go ahead and look at f prime. You'd do a sign chart. 
you'd look at negative four and three, and then you'd plug some stuff in, right? So if you plugged in negative five, you'd get negative times a negative, so you get a positive. Uh, if you plugged in zero, you'd get four times negative three, you get a negative. If you plugged in four, you get a positive times a positive. So it looks something like this. And then you would conclude, right, we're going up, then we're going down, we're going down, then we're going up, and so here we have a max, and here we have a min. So now for the second derivative test, we obviously want to go one step further here. And so we get the second derivative is 2x plus 1. But now we're not finding intervals of concavity. We're not looking for inflection points. So we don't set this equal to 0. We just plug in our critical values to f double prime and see what the picture looks like. right? So f double prime of negative 4 is negative 8 plus 1. That's less than 0. And so the second derivative test says, okay, it's less than zero, so it's facing down at negative four, right? And this is our critical point. So this is exactly saying we have a max at negative four. And then f double prime of three is going to be just six plus one, which is greater than zero. And so there we're facing up and we're at the bottom. And so we have a min, right? And so these guys agree. They're just different ways of getting at the same problem. Okay, so for your second exercise, uh, here's your function f of x, and I want you to basically go through the second derivative test, right? So find your critical values, plug them into the second derivative, and figure out what you've got in terms of relative extrema. Okay, thank you for watching.